Good morning everyone and on this Sunday the 9th of August 2020 I welcome you to this joint service for the parishes of Drumgulland here at Bally Ward and St John's in Rothfryland. As we worship today, either now or later in this week, may you meet with the risen Lord, knowing him to be the one in whom we trust. This morning we are using the service of morning prayer too, beginning on page 101 in the Book of Common Prayer. Just to remind you that church will be re returning next Sunday, Sunday the 16th at 10.30 here in Bally Ward and at 12 noon in St John's Church Hall. If you are coming to church, please make sure you follow all the instructions you will be given. And if you feel unwell in any form, please do not come and remain at home. As we start our service, we have some words from scripture. Firstly from Psalm 96. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth stand in awe of him. And then in Luke 15 verses 18 and 19 we read, I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. We start our service by singing hymn number 590. My faith looks up to thee, hymn number 590. Beloved in Christ, we come together to offer to Almighty God our worship and praise and thanksgiving, to confess our sins and to receive God's forgiveness, to hear his holy word proclaimed, to bring before him our needs and the needs of the world, and to pray that in the power of his spirit we may serve him and know the greatness of his love. Let us confess our sins to God our Father. We join together in the words of the Confession on page 102. Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Merciful Lord, grant to your faithful people pardon and peace that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth will proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. For our psalm this morning, we turn to Psalm 85, verses 8 to 13, and they can be found on page 690 in the Book of Common Prayer. Psalm 85, verses 8 to 13. We'll say an alternate half verses. I will listen to what the Lord God will say, for he shall speak peace to his people and to the faithful, that they turn not again to folly. Truly his salvation is near to those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth are met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed give all that is good, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before him and direct his steps in the way. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our Gospel reading this morning from St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 14, beginning at verse 22, is read to us by Adam Lachlan. Jesus walks on water. Then Jesus made the followers get into the boat. He told them to go to the other side of the lake. He said he would come later. He stayed there to tell everyone they could go home. After Jesus said goodbye to the people, he went up into the hills by himself to pray. It was late and he was there alone. By this time the boat was already a long way from shore. Since the wind was blowing against it, the boat was having trouble because of the waves. Between three and six o'clock in the morning, Jesus' followers were still in the boat. Jesus came to them. He was walking on the water. When they saw him walking on the water, it scared them. It's a ghost, they said, screaming in fear. But Jesus quickly spoke to them. He said, don't worry, it's me. Don't be afraid. Peter said, Lord, if that is really you, tell me to come to you on the water. Jesus said, come, Peter. Then Peter left the boat and walked on the water to Jesus. But while Peter was walking on the water, he saw the wind and the waves. He was afraid and began sinking in, into the water. He shouted, Lord, save me. Then Jesus caught Peter with his hand. He said, your faith is small. Why did you doubt? After Peter and Jesus had got into the boat, the wind stopped. Then the followers in the boat worshipped Jesus and said, you really are the son of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Before we come to look at God's word, we join to sing the new hymn, Yet Not I, But Through Christ in Me.
by my side, the Savior He will stay. I labor on in weakness and rejoicing, for in my need His power is displayed. To this I hold, my shepherd will defend me from the deepest valley. Let us pray. O God, help us to listen to your word with understanding, to receive it with faith, and to obey it with courage. For Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. Faith is one of those words that is used in church and in Christian circles. But do we really know what it is? And have we really experienced it? When we talk about faith, it is usually usually describing the relationship that a Christian has with Jesus Christ. The writer of the Hebrews tells us exactly what faith is. He says in chapter 11, verse 1, Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. At this particular time, we are very aware of the effects of the coronavirus or COVID-19 as that it has had on the population of the world. But have you seen it? Do you know what it looks like? It's a bit like the wind. We cannot see it, but we know the consequences of it. Faith is like that. We cannot physically see faith, 
But we, but we do have the opportunity of seeing the outworkings of faith. It should be evident in the lives of those people who follow Christ. A preacher once said to his congregation that you are sitting before me in this church is a fact. That I am standing speaking to you from this pulpit is a fact. But it is only faith that makes me believe that anyone is listening. He would have only found out if the congregation were listening afterwards. And then his faith would have been proven correct or wrong. As Christians, we believe in the risen Jesus Christ who came to earth to die for our sins and then defeated death by rising back to life again. We have no physical evidence to prove that right now, but we do have the eyewitness accounts of what took place during those 40 days between Easter and Ascension. Also, we have the accounts of the gospel writers who have written of what Jesus said and did during the three years of his ministry. The Christian has the faith in Jesus. They have the faith that Jesus is coming back and that we will all have the opportunity to be with him someday. Without that faith, our lives would not be worth living. Everything in life requires faith. We go out to the car and turn the key hoping that the engine will start. Like most of you, I do not know how the engine works. We turn the key and the engine starts. If you look at a normal kitchen chair, you believe and trust that that seat will hold you. That if you sit on it, it will hold you. There is no point in saying that you have faith in the chair if you do not test it out. The Christian life is no different. There is no harm in testing different aspects of what it is like to be a Christian. Life will not always be easy. There will be trials and circumstances that we all will have to go through. But when you know that you have faith in Jesus Christ, it will make things so much more bearable and manageable. The Bible reading today that was read to us by Adam shows us how important faith is when trials and distractions around us distract us from focusing on Jesus Christ, taking away our faith in the one who is always there for us. But before we get to that particular part, let us look back a little. Before the reading from last week, Jesus had just been told that his good friend and cousin John had been, had been beheaded and that he was wanting to go and have some time alone. We know that did not happen as crowds of people followed him, wanting to hear and see more of what he was doing. This resulted in the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000, which we looked at last week. By now, Jesus must have been totally exhausted and really wanted to spend some quality time in quiet with his father. He sent his disciples on ahead while he dismissed the large crowd. Notice that Jesus withdrew from the people to be alone with his father. Jesus, the son of God, wanting to take time out to be with his father. It is something that Jesus took very seriously and it is something that we should be doing as well. God is our heavenly father and we who profess to be followers of Christ should be wanting to spend quality time with him. Things have been so different this year and there is nothing that we could do about it but it has given us much more time to spend seeking out God's will and purpose for our lives. If Jesus, 
God's only son needed to spend time alone with God. How much more do we? The disciples were alone, out in the boat, and the wind started to rise, and the human reaction was that of fear. Now, some of these men were experienced fishermen, and yet they still feared for their lives. Fear sets in when Jesus is not there. We might think that we are perfectly all right and can manage on our own, but when trouble strikes, we then realize how important it is to be trusting fully and having total faith in Jesus Christ. Jesus appears to be pushing the disciples to their limit in that they were frightened when the storm arose on the lake. And now he is approaching them while walking on the water. Can you imagine the fear that would have been in that boat? Especially when the disciples could not escape. It was as if they were trapped. Verse 26 tells us, When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. If experienced fishermen were so frightened with things, when things must have been, things, if experienced fishermen were so frightened, things must have been really bad. You would think that with years of experience behind them, they would have encountered a lot of what happens and therefore they would have been prepared. As I have said, they were without Jesus and things were going wrong. We live a life that sometimes we take for granted and that nothing will happen to us. We think that we have everything sussed And nothing will affect us. But when something happens that we are not prepared for, we do not know who to turn to. It was Jesus who was there with them, but they did not recognize him. It it is the same with us. Jesus is with us day in and day out. But we tend to go off on a tangent of ourselves and forgetting about the powerful hand of Jesus. Jesus told the disciples and the message is the same for us here and now in verse 27. Take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. When trusting in God, we really have nothing to fear. Notice what happens next. Paul asks to go to Jesus and is invited to come on the water. All was going well when Peter had his focus and faith firmly fixed on his master, Jesus Christ. But the moment he got concerned with what was happening around him, he started to sink. Remember, The water on the lake was rough. The winds were blowing. And yet Peter wanted to get out and go to Jesus. Everything was going well until he took his eyes off Jesus and became more focused on what was happening around him. This resulted in him starting to sink and he thought he was going to die. But when he called out to Jesus to save him, as we are told in verse 31, immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. We need to be careful. Sometimes when everything is going well, we have little or no thought of Jesus Christ or God. We think that we are all powerful and that nothing can stop us. But sometimes it only takes the smallest of things to knock us off the path that we want to take. Jesus will always be there. 
We only have to cry out to him and he will save us. Peter cried to Jesus when he was sinking and we are able to cry to him also. When we do, he will save us. There will be no inquiry that it will take weeks and months because as once we cry to the Lord to save us and help us. He is there immediately and will protect us. As a Christian, life will not be easy. We will be called into situations that in everyday life we would be wanting to avoid. But it is through the grace of God that we will be able to manage whatever situation we find ourselves in. God will guide us and will give us the knowledge and the ability to cope with whatever is thrown at us. But notice that before Peter was helped by Jesus, he had to cry out in verse 30, Lord, save me. That should be our cry today. We are going through difficult times. And it is as we approach the throne of God through Jesus Christ that we can be protected and then rewarded. In life, there will be a reward. It will not come this side of eternity. But once you breathe your last your destination will be known to you. Jesus saved Peter, and he wants to save you as well. Peter cried to the Lord, and that is what we have to do as well. Jesus accused Peter of having little faith. He doubted in the power of Jesus Christ, probably even forgetting who he was. I believe that this country and this world are turning their backs on all things that are Christian. We are moving further away from what the Bible teaches and we are losing faith in the one who will save the world. So what are we to do about it? You will notice at the end of the reading, in verse 32, we read, And when they, that is Peter and Jesus, climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Jesus had control of that particular situation, and he has control of the world we are living in right now. Peter's mind started to wander, and when he took his eyes off Jesus, he started to sink. The disciples were parted from Jesus on the lake when the storm arose. But when Jesus got into the boat, everything became calm. If that is not telling you something, nothing will. In this life, we will, if we have not already, face situations in which life will be very difficult Situations where in our own thinking and ability we are lost and frightened with no indication of anything better coming along. That is the position the devil wants you to be in. He wants you to think about yourself and try all that you can without any thought for anyone else. But there is a much better way. A way that is calm, a way that is joyful, and a way that is peaceful. When Jesus got into the boat, the wind died down. There is an open invitation for you, and only you can decide if you take it or not. Jesus wants to be part of your life. He wants to calm your troubled soul. He is waiting for you. All you have to do is invite him in. 
Jesus wants to have faith. Jesus wants us to have faith in him. And we can only do that if we accept him as our Lord and Savior. Our lives are like the storm on the lake when we are alone. But with faith in Jesus Christ, we can be calm, knowing that we will, have, we will be having a joyful and peaceful eternity in heaven with Christ. Come to him today. Amen. Having read God's word and having heard it expounded, we join together to confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed on page 112. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. O Lord, save the Queen and grant her government wisdom. Let your ministers be clothed with righteousness and let your servants shout for joy. O Lord, save your people and bless those whom you have chosen. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and let your glory be over all the earth. O God, make clean our hearts within us and renew us by your Holy Spirit. The Colics for today, the ninth Sunday after Trinity. Almighty God, who sent your Holy Spirit to be the life and light of your church, open our hearts to the riches of his grace, that we may bring forth the fruit of the Spirit in love and joy and peace, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Colics at Morning Prayer. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and ever-living God, we give you thanks for bringing us safely to this day. Keep us from falling into sin or running into danger, and in all things guide us to know and do your will, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, in whom we live and move and have our being, we humbly pray that your Holy Spirit may so guide and govern us that in all the cares and occupations of our daily life we may never forget your presence, but may remember that we are always walking in your sight through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We continue in our attitude of prayers and they'll be read to us this morning by Sandra Linton. Let us pray. Please, Lord, comfort those who are sad and grieving and sick and those who just don't know which way to turn. Give them courage to keep going, although everything seems to be hopeless. Lord, when things go wrong, it is then we realise there is only you. You are our hope and strength. 
We pray that in their troubles and sadness, more and more people will come to know your love and peace. In Jesus' name, Amen. Heavenly Father, we praise you because you have created a world that is beautiful and awe-inspiring. When we think about the size of the universe, or when we hear the sound of crashing thunder, or feel the power of waves breaking on the seashore, we remember what a great God you are. And then we see the little things, like the pattern on a butterfly's wing, the colours, the feathers on a bird, the different shapes of leaves on the trees, and the perfection of petals on flowers. And we realise that as well as being very powerful and mighty, you also care about the little things and have a great sense of beauty. Please teach us to appreciate all that you have made and to enjoy this world. In Jesus' precious name, Amen. We sum up our prayers in the words of the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Our final hymn this morning is hymn number 680. Will your anchor hold the good old boys brigade hymn? Will your anchor hold hymn number 680? As we come to the end of our service, may I thank those who have helped in any way. To Adam Lachlan for reading the scripture reading. To Sandra Linton for leading us in prayers. Grace Trimble for providing the music. And Timothy Donaldson for helping me with the recordings every week. I also want to thank the rector for inviting me to take these services this past four weeks. It is great to be back with you in my home parish and ask that you will continue to pray for me as I begin my new ministry in the group parishes of Akaderg, Donoghmore and Scarva 
from Sunday the 23rd of August. So as we draw our service to a close, let us pray. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with us all and remain with us always. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.